The Gilded Age occurred during the 1870s to 1900s in the United States. During this time period, politics could be defined as the era of forgettable presidents. These presidents included Rutherford B. Hayes, Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, and William H. Harrison. Party-wise, the Republicans dominated the office of presidency. However, they did not control the government. While the Republicans were ruling office, the Democrats were relying on the South and support from the working class. This Republican domination of office caused unionist strikes, labor groups, and new acts that addressed railroad, business, and working class issues. Before the time period of forgettable presidents, the Granger Movement, which took its name from the National Grange of the Patrons of Husbandry, began after the Panic of 1873. The movement expanded rapidly in 1875. The local granges became political forums and increased in number as channels of farmers protested against economic abuses of the day. Railroad practices began in the late 1860s by farmers who called for government regulation of railroads and other industries whose prices and practices were monopolized and unfair. Small companies were being overcharged while big companies like the Standard Oil Company received rebates. The railroad practices like pools and rebates were unfair to the farmers. The Granges wanted these practices illegal in order to avoid being cheated. The Granger Movement and the Munn, Illinois case helped make public regulations for private businesses that were devoted to public use. The Grange used block voting, which allowed Grange members to get into the state legislature. Once they were able to be a part of the legislature, they could support railroad reforms. After members of Grange became a part of the legislature, they enacted Granger's state laws. These laws consisted of codes that railroad companies had to abide. The aim was to make railroad practices fairer for farmers. In 1886, problems arose in the Wabash case with the St. Louis and Pacific Railroad Company versus Illinois. The court declared an Illinois law prohibiting long and short haul clauses in transportation contracts as an infringement on the exclusive powers of Congress invalid. The result of the case was denial of state power to regulate interstate rates for railroads. This decision led to the creation of the Interstate Commerce Commission. The Interstate Commerce Act of 1887 was the first true federal regulatory agency. It was designed to address the issues of railroad abuse and discrimination. The act required shipping rates to be reasonable and just, rates to be published, secret rebates outlawed, and price discrimination against small markets made illegal. In 1887, the firm of Ida Munn and George Scott's successors used illegal rates for their warehouses, and then they appealed to the Illinois Supreme Court when they upheld the law. The Illinois legislature responded to the pressure from the National Grange by setting maximum rates that private companies could charge for the storage and transport of agricultural products. This caused the Munn v. Illinois case. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of the state of Illinois and upheld the right of states to regulate private property when it is in the interest of the public. This ruling initiated the beginning of Hayes' presidency. Hayes was known as his fraudulency due to the election of 1876. What complicated this election was that the Democrats in these states had won the state elections by violence, fraud, and intimidation of southern states, leading to the Democrats' votes to be canceled out. Due to the overuse of the spoil system, Hayes made a decision to clean up the New York Custom House. It infuriated Conkling because the New York Custom House were his loyal supporters. To have a job in the government office, they started to award jobs based on merit. During Hayes' presidency, the Munn v. Illinois case of 1887 sustained the right of states to regulate private property when it was in the interest of the public. Knights of Labor is a labor organization that was created in 1869. 
It was to propose to organize both skilled and unskilled workers in the same union and open their doors to black and women. It wanted to create an eight-hour workday, termination of child labor, and equal pay for equal workers. This organization was campaigning for economic and social reform, including coats for safety and health. Railway strikes of 1877 was a violent labor management confrontation that was started by the Knights of Labor. The Depression of 1870s caused railroads lines to cut wages. It started to create more problems for the society. The workers walked off and blocked tracks and ended up to turn more violent, having President Hayes send federal troops to protect the railroad. During Garfield and Arthur's presidency, there were three groups connected to the parties. The stalwarts were a group that attempted to give party favorites a profession in government. They favored patronage and machine politics. They also utilized the spoil system and added to the corruption. Another group were the Mugwums. They had a Native American name meaning holier than thou. They were also known as liberal Republicans. These are Republicans who supported Grover Cleveland, who was a Democrat. Mugwumps were angered at the Republicans because Blaine, the Republican candidate, was not going to do anything about the spoil system. So they decided to support an honest Democrat. Lastly, there is a group called the Half-Breeds. They were anti-stalwarts, led by James G. Blaine. They disagreed over who appoints jobs. Half-breeds favored the reform and were against patronage. President Garfield was assassinated by Charles Guiteau in November 1881. President Arthur took his spot after the assassination. Because of the Mugwumps' hate for the spoil system during this term, the Pendleton Act was passed. The Act sought to regulate and improve the civil service system. It required civil service exams before people could receive jobs in administration. The American Federation of Labor was led by Samuel Gompers in 1886, had only included skilled workers. The Federation fought for workers' rights in a nonviolent way, focusing on bread and butter issues, such as higher wages and better conditions. The Haymarket Square Riot of 1886 is a labor protest rally in Chicago that turned into a riot when someone threw a bomb at the police. The Knights of Labor were blamed for this riot and the radical labor activists were convicted it became a major setback of labor union movement. The Pullman strike of 1894 was a widespread railroad strike and boycott that had disrupted rail traffic. It led to President Cleveland intervening with federal troops. The strike highlighted both divisions within labor and the government's new willingness to use armed force to combat work stoppages. James G. Blaine was an American states and Republican politician who represented Maine in the U.S. House of Representatives. Blaine, the leader of the half-breeds, authored and proposed Blaine Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The Mugwumps left the Republican Party in the election of 1884. Instead, they supported their opponent, the Democrats, who later won the election. The Wilson-Gorman Tariff of 1894 slightly reduced the U.S. tariff rates from the numbers set in the 1890 McKinley Tariff and imposed a 2% income tax. The tariff added a number of items to the free list, including sugar, lumber, coal, and wool. The Billion Dollar Congress is the 51st Congress. It was the first to pass a billion dollar budget. The billion dollar was named due to all of the money spent. They gave pensions to Civil War veterans, increased government purchases on silver, and passed the McKinley Tariff Act of 1890. The McKinley Tariff Act was a protective tariff that raised the tax on foreign imports by 50% that was backed by Republicans that liked higher taxes on imported goods. Tariffs had screwed over American farmers. They were having to buy expensive products from American manufacturers while also trying to sell their goods in the global market to be successful. After passing the McKinley Tariff Act, the Republican Party started to lose support. 
The Sherman Antitrust Act was the first federal act that outlawed monopolistic business practices that included the requirement of governments to investigate trust. A trust is an arrangement where stockholders transfer shares. Larger trusts began to dominate industry, destroying competition. This act was an attempt to minimize monopolies. However, there were many loopholes and made all large trusts suffer, not only bad ones. Homestead Strike of 1892 pitied Carnage Steel Company against Almagamated Association of Iron and Steel Workers, which was a strong trade union in retaliation against wage cuts. The riot was ultimately put down by Pinkerton police and the state militia, and the violence further damaged the image of unions. The Populist Party, who was also known as the People's Party, is a political party formed from frustrated farmers in the South and Midwest in protests against the Democratic and Republican Party to express their agricultural differences. That's a lot of peace. They called for free coinage of silver, a graduated income tax, and government regulation of banks and corporations, ownership of railroads, telephones, and assistance to farmers in difficult times. In the election of 1892, the party nominated General John B. Weaver and gained prominence as a third political party. Additionally, they supported the black community and gained massive support. The election of 1896 was between William McKinley, representing the Republicans, versus William Jennings Bryan, a Democrat. The Cross of Gold speech was delivered by William Jennings Bryan, given at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Bryan supported bimetallism, which is a system allowing the unrestricted currency of two metals as legal tender at fixed ratio to each other, or called as free silver. Bryan believed that having free silver would bring the nation prosperity. He was considered one of the most famous political addresses in American history. 16 to 1 was represented by the ratio of silver to gold. The measure would have increased the amount of money in circulation and aided cash-poor and debt-burden taxes.